name is Troy Hankey and I'm the driver. My name is Alex Zoffer. Roy Barthel. I'm Mike Peterson. My name is uh, Mike Ajak. Hello, I'm Jake Warner. My name is Matt Wirtz. Right. My name is Adam Hassig. I'm Narissa Hansen. My name is Sven Krause. I'm a junior electrical engineer and I'm president of the Super Miles Vehicle Team. I do some electrical work and uh, that's, about, that's about all I do. Make jokes, make a lot of jokes. <laughs> yeah. Break some ice, you know. <coughs> <laughs> These people who are doing these types of things are going to have the knowledge and the ideas of what it takes to bring something from dream to reality. Well, with all the technology that's out there and all the different engines that people have made in the past, I mean, there's so much more capabilities than, say, 30 years ago, but we're not getting a whole lot better gas mileage than we were 30 years ago on the average car. So, I mean, if we can get close to a thousand miles to the gallon out of a just dinky car, I mean, we should be able to get 50 miles to the gallon out of a regular sized car pretty easy, if not more. Again, in our competition, I mean, we competed against some really tough teams. Rose Hallman, there was uh, Penn State, Dubai, India. And there's some really tough teams out there. And just from coming there the first year and being successful and showing that, you know, Walk School of Engineering is a threat to be reckoned with. One thing that I think anybody can get out of this is that it is possible for anyone to change, you know, the future. You know, we're, we're a bunch of college kids right now. We built a car that got very, very efficient fuel mileage, and you know, for us to do that in like one year, uh, I think that was pretty amazing. It's creating on your own. You're not babysitting. You're not in front of a teacher. There's no clear-cut answer. To those, there's no solution to manual. You have to come up with your own answer, and you better do it fast because you've got to complete the car, which ultimately we did this year, and we'll definitely do next year. Cars today can be more efficient. They can be more earth-friendly, and uh, just a matter of actually putting the time, effort, and uh, engineering into it to make this happen. The Super Mileage Project basically began my freshman year in 2007. I began speaking with people on my phone. Nathan Yol, to be exact, he is the vice president of the Super Mileage team. And we thought, had both been exposed to Super Mileage, or what's labeled as high mileage in high school. And we wanted to keep doing something. We saw this is a great opportunity and something that we had not done in the, over 30 years. And Something that really was overlooked. The beginning of my sophomore year, we approached MSUE officially and asked them, you know, what the steps were to create such a team. And there were a lot of struggles that we went through. And people started joining left and right. And we ran into people like Mike Ajax and Marissa Hansen, who really jumped right into it and got their hands dirty right from the start. Um, last year, in the beginning of the year, Alex came to me asking if I wanted to be a driver for his mileage team. And obviously, I thought that'd be a great opportunity. I always want to be a part of a group that uh, built a car. Also, you know, something like fun. Did fairly well at competition. Took 11th place off 33 teams. So that was a pretty big accomplishment. Blew right through the technical inspection with flying colors and had zero problems. And had to, President of Eaton Corporation personally come and congratulate us on our sort of successes and ultimately being the only team to do eight out of eight, a lot of trial runs. We worked hard, we never gave up. We had high goals and we met a lot of our goals. I don't think I ever could have thought or imagined that we were in the position we're at now. It's not losing focus on big picture. To be honest, I really don't think there's anything we could have done differently to prepare for the competition this year. For three days that all we're doing is car, car, car. I was a little worried about tech inspection, but once we got there and they started looking over the car, it's like, wow, we did good, you know, for our first year. And they're like, oh, this is good, this is good, this is there. And so, once we got through that, then it's like, wow, this is like, time, you know, it's a real deal. The only one I was worried about was the visual test. Stand back there with a sign with a shape on it, 
and I had no idea what it was. And then I heard Sven tell them that I was colorblind, and they're like, oh, it's a shape. And so I'm like, I'm squinting, and they're like, can you see it? I'm like, uh, a triangle? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, God. I can't believe I just did that. And then they go to the other side, and I could not tell at all. So I just started rambling off like triangle, square, circle, and they're like, no, no, no. And then they're like, adjust the mirror. So then Sven goes down there and he's trying to give me a clue with his hand and I, I didn't catch on to that. And finally I just guess uh, cross. They're like, yeah, you got it. Now we go, gotta go back to the other side. I'm like, no. <laughs> it was running great. And we just kept leaning it out, changing our speeds a little bit. The big thing was when Troy came in or he had to go out and I was the one that took him in and out and because there was a staging area that you had to give the referees their clipboard and they would write down all your information for that run on. And sometimes when I took them out there, there was other cars that were coming to the start finish line and we had to push them out there pretty quick and get them ready to go very fast, otherwise you couldn't get run over. The big thing was when our throttle position sensor came unplugged and it just was injecting the same amount of fuel no matter what, which was killing our gas mileage. From there, we got that fixed. We went back out on the track and found that we were running too cold. And because that day was a lot colder than when we were practiced in. And our engine that likes to be really hot to be more efficient. So we keep wrapped it and then we kept going back out. It was hot in the car, comfort wise. It wasn't too bad. I was worried that my neck and back would get sore, but I was sitting up almost upright, so that didn't bother me at all. Driving for hours in that heat, it finally took its toll. I was getting drained by the end, but kept driving well, and we kept improving our gas mileage every run, so you take the good with the bad, I guess. When we were done, I wanted to go back out there and keep going, trying to beat our previous gas mileage, so I mean... I'm fairly sure if we could have got a 9th or 10th run in, um, we could have passed our goal of 1,000 miles a gallon. For the first few runs, I was out there all by myself, and it's like, you know, going around in circles, woo -woo. But then as the day went on, more cars came out, and we started off by going really fast, and so I just like fly right past them, I'm like, this is fun. <laughs> and. Uh, Towards the end, everyone was trying to get their last runs in, and so I remember on the last lap, like I was going around the back stretch, and it was three cars wide, all in a row, and I had no idea where to go. And obviously, I didn't want to hit the brakes because that would ruin our gas mileage. And so I just like picked a gap between two cars and I just shot right through them, and that that was real exciting. It was almost like we we're actually racing out there too. One thing I got to compliment on is our car never broke down. Um, as I was driving, I'd, every run I'd always see cars pulled off to the side, the driver gets out, and all of a sudden they're in the back of the truck and towed back. So I mean, we managed to get all eight runs down without any problems at all, so that was a huge accomplishment also. I think the most nerve-wracking part of this whole thing wasn't even the competition itself, um, but the day before, when here we are at one in the afternoon, all through tech, all ready to go, and basically you're told, okay, go out and track, do whatever you want, you have the rest of the afternoon to practice. And we head out there as soon as that track opened, we're out there driving around lap after lap. And the whole time we're sitting there thinking, why are we the only ones out here? Why isn't there anyone else on this track taking advantage of this opportunity? I had a good idea of what to do. We talked about it at our meeting before the competition. And so we knew that we were going to drive up to like 20 miles an hour and then close down to 10. So actually out on the track, it went better than testing out at the industrial park because there I'd have to use my brakes a lot, worry about traffic, stopping at stop signs. So once we got out there, I never touched the brakes once. We actually loosened them up. Growing up, I've always watched NASCAR and stuff, and so to be out on a test track, it, it was just a once in a lifetime opportunity. It was nice having everyone work together as a team. But at competition, it's just like we all clicked. I'm, there was people timing my laps. Um, Calvin was holding on to pit board every time I went by, so I wouldn't keep, so I could keep track of my laps, so I didn't have to worry about it. I'd just drive by, and Calvin would be holding it out, so that helped a lot. Then, like when I'd come in, someone else would bring me water or a little snack or something. So everyone on the team did their part. 